Ben Salisbury here, coming at you today with 10 ways to sell wine. How many are you doing? Stay tuned, let's find out. Because of the intense competition, selling wine today is so much harder than it's ever been. And you may need to expand the number of ways that you're selling wine. So this list is going to be really helpful. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below because I read all the comments and I respond to them all too. So let's get busy with the list. The first item on the list is going to be familiar and a no-brainer, and that is selling in your tasting room, your winery facility. Most wineries, business plans call for having a tasting room. It's so much easier when you get people on your property and you give them a little tour and you bring them to the tasting bar. It's the easiest and best way to sell wine. Here's the problem. It's getting a lot harder than it used to be to bring people to your tasting room to optimize that foot traffic. But it is still the best way to do it and you should be doing everything you can to take your game to the next level. For example, using Facebook events, getting into text marketing, SMS marketing, I would suggest you give Red Chirp a try. There's a lot of traction in the wine business for Red Chirp and you might as well jump on that bandwagon and find out how to do that. If you're doing things the same way today that you did five years ago, you're just not going to get as much foot traffic to your tasting, but it's still the, the best way to sell wine. The second way to sell wine will also be very familiar to you, which is wine clubs. Getting people to join your wine club is one of the best ways to ramp up revenue. Here's the problem. It's so much more competitive than it used to be. Really, the game of wine club sales comes down to retaining the members you've got. And a lot of that has to do with being flexible in your offerings, putting more control into the hands of the wine club member. There's no shortage of information on the internet about how to optimize wine clubs. And you should be reading it all because the game is much, much tougher. And so once again, if you're not taking your game to new levels, you're going to miss out. You're going to have attrition in your wine club members and you won't know how to get them back. And it is so much harder to get them back than it is to get them in the first place and then retain the ones you've got. The number three way to sell wine is also fairly obvious and that is e-commerce sales off of your website. However, uh, just because you have wine for sale on your website does not mean you're optimizing it. I have a lot of different resources on this topic. One of the best is called How to Sell Wine Online Like a Pro. I have it in both video form and in a blog form. I'll put the links to both of them right here on the screen, I, and I'll also put it in the description below. I highly suggest you go check this out. It's probably the fastest way you could find how to, op how to optimize your e-commerce sales. There's checklists involved that will allow you to evaluate what you're currently doing and see how you compare to what is the best in class way to do this. I will just say a couple of things though. If your mobile experience isn't optimized, it's really going to hurt you. Selling lots of wine off your website is a function of how great that shopping experience is. That's one thing and it's totally fixable, totally within your control. But the other thing is how much traffic you're able to drive to your website. And that's a function of SEO and uh, the size of your email list, lead generation. I have tons of uh, information about this. You'll find all of that in these articles called How to Sell Wine Online Like a Pro. So check them out. Now the fourth way to sell wine is going to be fairly new to a lot of you and that is digital three tier. Like I said, most of you may not even know what I'm talking about. Let me be more specific. There's a platform called LibDib. I'll put the logo here on the screen. You can go check them out. They are a fully compliant digital distributor. And this is a game changer for small wineries. In fact, if you're used to selling all of your wine in your tasting room and your wine clubs and events, etc., and you want to start expanding the number of ways to sell wine, this is a great place to start. It's very low cost to get up and running. LibDib is uh, functioning legally in 14 states, including all the major big ones like Texas, Florida, California, New York, Illinois. So you really need to spend some time on the LibDib website. And I've got a great resource for you. I'll put a link in the description to an article about tips for selling on LibDib. That's a great place to start. Another cool thing about selling on LibDib is they are closely associated, literally in a partnership with RNDC. So if you can perform well on the LibDib platform, it's a good gateway to much larger, more traditional three-tier distribution. So get in touch with Digital 3-Tier. 
Our website at winesalestimulator.com is chock full of resources on how to sell in the three-tier world digitally. So check those out. Now, the fifth way to sell wine you probably are familiar with, and that's the traditional three-tier system, where you go find a distributor in a state, you convince them to carry your product, and in theory, you know, they're supposed to go out and uh, make a lot of new distribution for you. However, in the last five or six years, this has really not been a good strategy because there's just so much competition. Distributors, large, medium, and small, are overwhelmed with the size of their portfolio. You're going to be one of 20,000, 25,000 wine brands if you go with one of the big boys. And even if you go with one of the smaller ones, the problem here is the ratio of brands to salespeople. That ratio isn't any better for the sales, for the smaller uh, distributor. So traditional three-tier can work. I would recommend going the digital three-tier route first until you get some traction and show there's a demand for your product. But the reason I mentioned the traditional three-tier now is many of you are already in it. Many of you are already in the three-tier system. You've got a distributor in your home state and maybe a few other states. I want to offer you some great resources to help you optimize what it is you're already doing. The first is a video called Three Things That You Can Expect From Distributors. I'll put a link in the description. I have another great and very popular video called The Role of the Distributor, which really helps you get your head on straight about what they can and cannot do for you. I also have a great video called the New Brand Survival Guide. And even if you're not a new brand and you've had a traditional three-tier distributor for a while, this video is going to help you a lot. Just to kind of get your head on straight on what you can and can't do with a traditional three-tier distributor right here in 2023. Now, the sixth way to sell wine is, again, probably new for many of you. It's selling winery direct to major retailers. Now, just to give you the quick and dirty on this, you could go straight to a webinar. I have a webinar that explains how this game works, what you need to do to participate in it, and how to get yourself off on the right foot. I'll put a link in the description for this webinar. You're going to love that. It's only like 36 minutes, but it's going to open up a whole new world to you. Just a quick explanation of Winery Direct. Big, big retailers like Specs in Texas, ABC in Florida, Binnie's in Illinois, BevMo in California, and there's dozens more. They like to have a relationship with the winery where they use a clearing distributor to bring the goods into their warehouse or their stores instead of a traditional three-tier distributor. A traditional three-tier distributor is going to put a pretty hefty markup on the wine by the time it gets to the shelf. In a winery direct situation, they use a clearing distributor, which takes a very, a very, very small fee to legally clear the wine into the state. This allows the retailer to make a much, much fatter profit margin. It's the engine that drives this whole thing. Now, one of the things that you need is to not already have a traditional three-tier distributor in the states where you do want to do winery direct. But let's say it's too late for your home state and a few other states. It's not too late for a whole bunch of other states. So I would not appoint any new traditional three-tier distributors until I'd fully explored the opportunities for winery direct. And we have a ton of resources starting with that webinar. So I suggest you go watch that. If you have questions, feel free to reach out. We love to help people get into this game. Now, the seventh way to sell wine is through third-party retail platforms. You can do this in addition to selling wine off your own website. But there's some pretty large third-party platforms uh, like wine.com or Bounty Hunter, or there's a whole bunch of them. You could be Just a little bit of searching on Google, you could find them. And if you're really getting stuck, reach out to me. I'll be happy to give you a list of some more of these. But these are people who sell everyone's wines off their own platform. The advantages here are huge because they know how to drive traffic to their own platform. Their shopping experience is awesome. And so you could sell wine off your own website, But you can also make sure that you're for sale on these third-party platforms. It's pretty shocking to me how few wineries even think about this strategy of how to broaden the number of ways that you're able to sell wine. So this is definitely something you want to look into. If you go online, use a tool like Yelp, and you start searching for beer, wine, and spirits stores, and you set the parameter for most reviewed instead of highest rated, It's going to show you the busiest package stores in your state or in your city. Then you can go visit their websites. And when you get there, take a look and see what they're doing from an e-commerce standpoint. 
Some of these retailers literally sell more wine off their own website than they do in their brick and mortar stores. It's a little bit of a research project, but it's a research project with a very high return on investment. So if you're not doing this now, I highly suggest you start looking into this. Now the eighth way to sell wine, and many of you are probably already doing that, and that's to learn everything you can about delivery apps, specifically Drizzly. They're not the only ones, but they're the biggest. They're really well funded. Delivery apps make it so that anybody can order your wine right off the internet. The key is partnering with Drizzly in the right way, and it really helps to have a lot of distribution already ready to go. But even if you just did it in your home market, this could be a huge advantage for you. Drizzly has a partner program. You can read all about it on their website. You should dive deep into the learning curve about how to fully leverage Drizzly. So if I ask you right now, are you fully leveraging delivery apps like Drizzly, and your answer isn't a resounding yes, then this is good news for you because you can look into this and add it as the eighth way that you can sell wine. Now the ninth way to sell wine is a very exciting way. I'm always shocked to find out how few winery owners are dabbling in this, and these are flash sites. Flash sites were the wine-loving public has a subscription and every day on their phone they get some kind of offer that's good just for that day. It's like a super great bottle of wine at a super low price and if you don't buy it right then and there you're going to miss out. The companies that have perfected this are companies like Last Bottle, Wines Till Sold Out, also known as WTSO, Last Call Wines, Wine Access. These are some of the more well-known uh, flash sites but there are literally dozens of them. And you need to A, investigate these sites that I just rattled off, read everything you can about them, and then start reaching out. These flash sites have a large appetite to sell wine. Now, the best application here is if you have excess inventory and you want to turn that inventory into cash, there's no better way to do it than connecting with a flash site. Be ready to send some samples. My best advice here is to put forth your rock bottom price right up front. They don't have a lot of patience for a lot of back and forth. And if you have wine that is aging and you're already maybe overlapping vintages, you've got to do something. The problem is only gonna get worse as time goes on, not better. So you might as well learn the flash sight game. It feels great to unload 150, 200, 300 cases of wine. Some will only buy if you've got five or 600. Wouldn't that be nice? But it's a great way to turn your inventory into cash. And it's underutilized by a lot of small wineries. Now the 10th way to sell wine is exporting wine from the US to other countries. You'd be shocked how many wineries are doing this and you don't have to export to all the countries in the world. Start with just one or two. Now there's a learning curve here, but a learning curve with a great payoff. Some of the things you're gonna to need to look into are the appropriate permits. You're gonna to need to get trained and there's several places you can go to get trained on this and if something you want my help with, just let me know. You'll need to choose a carrier, you know, a fully compliant registered carrier, and you may need to employ the services of a broker. Most brokers um, make their living helping wineries navigate the choppy waters of how to export. The learning curve is a little bit steep, but man, is it worth it. And a lot of wineries are already doing it. And you know what? A lot of wineries uh, are selling wines that, that are very, very expensive, that are come from really great appellations. These make some of the best wines for export. If you're selling wine for 14, 15 bucks a bottle, it's a little harder. But if you have some expensive wines where the profit margins are high, exporting wine could be a really good option for you. So submit to this learning curve, start doing some research. You won't be sorry. So there you have it, 10 different ways to sell wine. I hope that you found some ways that you're not currently doing. That's great news because you add those ways into your repertoire and you've just opened up some new revenue sources for yourself. Now I wanna offer you a final bit of help and an indispensable resource, if you will. I want you to check out our group coaching program called the Wine Sales Stimulator. Works for spirits too. In fact, half of our members are spirits. But this is a membership program where you pay a monthly fee, but you get access to everything you could need. All these 10 ways to sell wine that you just saw, we can teach you how to do all of them. So go to winesalesstimulator.com, click on explore the program, and you can read everything there is to know about the program. And if you have questions, just reach out, let me know. You can leave your questions in the comments below, or you can just reach out directly I'll put my email address right here on the screen. So I hope you found value in this video. If so, give it a thumbs up. 
We would love it if you'd subscribe. Uh, share it with someone who, who, someone else on your team that could really benefit from this. And let me know if you have any questions.